You, you know, when I caught the, the second case, I caught the second case. But while I was doing the first case, I saw what Death Row did. Okay. You know, me and Harry were sellies when, yeah, they, yeah, when yeah, they started yeah, Death Row. Yeah, yeah. So I got a first hand look at when Death Row was, was birthed. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I had no idea that I would be in the marijuana business. That was the furthest thing from my mind. I, I had made a, you, you know, when I caught the, the second case, I caught the second case. But while I was doing the first case, I saw what Death Row did. Okay. You know, me and Harry were sellies when, yeah, they, yeah, when they started yeah, Death Row. Yeah, yeah. So I got a first hand look at when Death Row was, was birthed. Wow. I was in the delivery room. You heard and seen it all. You know what I'm saying? I was in the room when David Kenner, Harry O, and me were all in the same attorney room. That's crazy, man. Like, t t did you think it'd ever be as big as it was, got? I didn't even believe in it. You know, <laughs> if, if when Harry was talking about music, I was talking about sports. <laughs> he was talking about music. He was talking music. I was you talking about sports. sports. Exactly. And but I had and I had all the plugs in the music already. I already knew Dick Griffey, Otis Smith. I met Barry Gordy one time. So I already had the plugs in the music. You know, Dick Griffey. He was a part of the, wasn't he part of Death Row, Death Row too? Did he, he helped he, he, he helped he, with he, it. he negotiated from what I heard and heard and read in the papers. Where Dick told me himself that he took Suge to uh, Interscope. And he negotiated the contract for Suge with Interscope. Because, um, you know, Dick was one of the first independents. Him and Otis Smith was one of the first independent uh, record people, black record people in the business. Some kind of way DOC said he was tied into that, too. When Death Row first was being born, I owned it. Mm, wow. How? Where Death Row used to be Future Shock. Future Shock was a company... Dre and I and, and Suge and a guy named Dick Griffey started. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, over a period of time, uh, in that business space, sometimes things can get, you know, uh, mixed up. When we interviewed him, he yeah. said him, Dick Gri Griffey, it was four of them, his way the way they, he explained it to me. Okay, okay. But that, now that that's excluding Harry O, though, right? Because Harry O was locked up at the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You so know, Harry just got out Correct. of Correct. How's he doing? He's doing really well for him. Well, you know, Harry's a genius. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm going to just let you know flat out. He's a genius. The man is a genius. You know, he's one of the smartest dudes I ever saw in my life. I ever had a chance to uh, talk to. You know, he, he, he he's on the ball. Wow. And, and and the thing is, man, like to see where you at now, to open a dispensary, man, after that, did you ever think? You, you couldn't have thought it because you didn't know. But <laughs> it's crazy that, that that you're even dealing with it now. No way and no one, nobody would ever think. Well, you know, when, when, when I first started to get into the, the, the motion to get a dispensary, they didn't want convicted felons to work in dispensaries. Wow. That's how twisted this system it was, twisted. was. So we had to go in and argue why convicted felons should be allowed to work in a dispensary. Wow, that's crazy. And 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 guess who they picked to argue? Why who they picked me? Oh, so, and why why was it so difficult? Like, well, for me it was real simple, you know. But you have politicians who never smoke weed. They say never sow weed. So they know nothing about weed. Right. But they're making decisions for the industry. Uh. They didn't understand that had it not been for the people who went to prison for selling weed, it wouldn't be legal right now. Wow. Wow. Those people made a statement. When you go to prison for that, that was, that was literally making a statement. Like, yeah. hey, I believe in this. Yeah, yeah. 
I believe in this enough to go to prison for it. So the people who went to prison for marijuana should be held in, 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 in a high light, especially all the people who were in the business because had those guys not made those sacrifices, it wouldn't be where it's at today. It's crazy like to convince you know, them to, how did you just break down the, how did you get them convinced that it's okay for a guy who has a felony to be able to, you know? Not that it's okay, that it's absolutely necessary. Wow. That this business is not going to survive if these guys are not allowed to participate. Hmm. First of all, guys did not stop selling weed because of prison. Prison is not what stopped people from selling marijuana. No. Can't do it with prison. Prison ain't stopping them from selling cocaine, crack, um, amphetamine. They still selling all that stuff and they, they giving gangs a time out for it, but dudes are still out here selling it. Mm. Because they have no other way to make an income. This That's is what real. they know. They're hustlers. The drug business has no selling. They don't care what color you is. They don't care about none of that. All they care is about do you have some money? Will you take care of your business? You do those, that's all the drug business care about. I thought about you when I was on the way over. I said, have you, going in the bid, doing the things that you've done, have, did, did any deal ever go bad where you went in to purchase something and it didn't go right? A lot of Whether deals you, don't cause you, know, many, like, you mean how many? That's what I'm saying. Like, like there's crazy instances. I lost a friend like that. He got shot. You know, because the deal didn't go right because somebody tried to rob him. They came down from another state. I think it was from Memphis. They came to Texas and they tried to, you know, they they were supposed to do a deal and go back to Memphis. But when they came, they didn't. They came to rob him. Right, right. And he ended up killing him. But like, there has been cases like that. I know I've seen them as well in the game. I, I never, never got robbed. Never got robbed. Almost That's what got, I was thinking. About. I almost got kidnapped before. Mm. Almost got kidnapped. And, you know, I don't have people run off with millions. Correct. Millions. Millions of dollars. Millions of dollars they don't run off with. Uh, the, the way I looked at it is if I give it to you, then it was something I could lose. Yes, because you're fronting this. You're fronting it to them. Correct. So if you front something to them, you already got it. It got to be something that you can afford to. To lose. to lose. They may not give it back. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.